This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. I am Forrest Frosty Crummel, the transitional and interim pastor of St. Paul United Church of Christ, welcoming you to worship. I'm standing outside of our sanctuary right now. I invite you to join us virtually or in person in our worship time together. join me in a spirit of prayer. Our Lord God, may your Holy Spirit descend upon us and set our hearts aflame on fire for you. Give us the ears to hear, the eyes to see, and the will to do. In Christ's name, amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive only ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, then God, who is faithful, will forgive us, especially when we confess with penitent hearts. Would you join me in a spirit of confession? God of love and justice, we long for peace within and peace without. We long for harmony in our families, for serenity in the midst of strife, and for the commitment to each other's growth. We long for the day when our homes will be a dwelling place for your love. And yet we confess that we are often anxious, we do not trust each other, and we harbor violence. We are not willing to take the risk and make the hard choices that love requires. Look upon us with kindness and grace. Rule in our homes and in the world. Show us how to walk in your paths through the mercy of our Savior. Amen. It is the psalmist that reminds us that as high as the heavens are above the earth, that is how far God removes our sin from us. As far as the east is from the west, that is how far God removes our transgressions. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. A prayer commemorating the 20th anniversary of 9-11. It was 20 years ago this weekend that planes crashed into the Twin Towers of New York City, as, all, as well as the Pentagon, and one plane was forcibly crashed in a field in Pennsylvania. I invite you to join me in a moment of reflection and remembrance and prayer. Pray with me. Lord God, we remember the stockbrokers and office workers, maintenance workers, bystanders, window washers, and all who work together so valiantly to help each other. We remember their great courage. We recall the firefighters who rushed in as other people were racing out. And we remember their, their selfless service. We remember the police officers who stood to protect and defend the people and performed their duties until the towers came crashing down upon them. And we remember their selfless sacrifice. We recall the thousands of men and women, young and old, single and married, American born and foreign born, who did not escape the buildings. We mourn the loss of human life. 
And we recall citizens who rushed to help and did all they could to help. We remember and give thanks for the dutiful commitment of those in distress. And we remember when people stood in line at the nation's blood banks to make living donations from their very bodies. And we are thankful for those who live on to pass life and love on to others. We remember the millions of Americans who gave so generously of their life and labor to endow funds to help the survivors and their families recover from their losses. And we are thankful for the generosity. We remember with deep and personal identification. We remember the affliction of our brothers and sisters and mark their pain as our own. Lord God, we also remember the words of the prophet Isaiah, who longed for the day when swords would be turned into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, when the lion would lie down with the lamb, and when a child could play over the nest of the adder. And we remember the vision of John on the island of Patmos, who saw the day when God would wipe away every tear and death would be no more. God of the ages, before your eyes all the empires rise and fall, and yet you are changeless. Be near us in this age of terror and those moments of remembrance. Uphold those who work and watch and wait and weep and love. By your spirit give rise in us to broad sympathy for all the peoples of your earth. Strengthen us to comfort those who mourn and work in large ways and small for those things that make for peace. Bless the people and leaders of this nation and all the nations so that warfare, like slavery before it, may become only a historic memory. We pray all of these things in the prayers of our hearts in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture lesson comes from the letter to the Colossians, from the third chapter. But now you must get rid of such things as anger and wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped the old self with all of its practices from you, and having clothed yourselves with a new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of the Creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. As God's chosen ones and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against someone, forgive each other, just as you have been forgiven, so that you must also forgive. May God add understanding to the reading of that word. Amen. Our sermon today is entitled, How Can I Possibly Forgive? And the text comes from the 13th verse of that passage I just shared with you. Forgive one another as freely as the Lord has forgiven you. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? May the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable into your sight, O Lord. And may those things said that are true be engraved upon every heart. And anything said that is false be quickly forgotten and cause no harm. In your name we humbly pray. Amen. One day the disciple Peter came to Jesus with a question. Lord, if... A brother or a sister has wronged me. How many times must I forgive them? Seven times? And Jesus responded to Peter's question, No, not seven times, but 70 times seven. I imagine Jesus saw a surprised look on Peter's face as well as a bit of surprise among the other disciples because he went on to tell them a parable. There was once a king who had all of his accounts brought up to date. And in going over the accounts, he found that there was this one servant who owed a great sum of money, more than he could ever repay in his lifetime. The king called the servant in and asked about the account and the great debt. 
And the servant fell to his knees and begged the king for more time and for mercy. There was not enough time in a lifetime for that servant to pay the debt. But the king took pity upon the servant and took the ledger book and tore a page out of it, folded it up and tossed it in the trash can and said, your debt has been forgiven. Well, that forgiven servant went out and found someone else who owed him a small sum of money, saw him in the marketplace and grabbed him by the neck and said, I want you to pay me right now every last penny. The servant, using almost the exact same words as the first servant, asked for more time. But this forgiven servant would have none of it. Put this man in prison until he has repaid every last penny. Now, when word of this got back to the king, the king called the first servant back in and said, now let me get this straight. You owed me a great sum of money, a sum that you could never repay in a lifetime or your children's lifetime, and I forgave you. But then you saw a fellow servant in the marketplace who owed you a small sum, a paltry sum of money, and, and you could not find in your heart forgiveness? Reaching into the trash basket, the king pulls out the crumpled up ledger sheet and straightens it back out on the desk and tells the guards to put this first servant, the forgiven servant, in prison until he had repaid the entire debt. Then speaking to the disciples, Jesus said, and so the Lord will do to you if you do not learn how to forgive one another. I've come to the belief that forgiveness is at the very heart of the teachings of Jesus. And yet in life, we have been hurt and injured and damaged. And we oftentimes have to ask ourselves, how can I possibly forgive someone who has done this to me or to someone whom I have loved? I have to acknowledge up front that there are some things in this world that we are perhaps nearly incapable of forgiving. And at those times, we have to ask God to give us the strength and the courage to forgive. And there are some things in this world that we will never understand on this side of the grave. But in all things, God works together for the good for those that love him and that are called to his purposes. Lewis Smeads, a, the late Lewis Smeads, a professor at Fuller Theological Seminary wrote a book on forgiveness, and in that book he outlined four elements of forgiveness, four steps that we can incorporate in learning how to forgive. The first step is to acknowledge the fact that we have been hurt. We have been wronged. We did not deserve it. It should not have happened to us. The second step is to assign blame, to acknowledge the fact that someone else hurt us and that they have wronged us, and that we as a child of God did not deserve what had been done to us. But whether they confess or not what they have done, it doesn't make any difference. Because while we may have been a victim of a wrong. We don't need to be victimized. We don't need to carry the scar or the wound of that wrong with us forever. And that brings us to the third step. And that third step is to give up our right to revenge. Now that may strike you as odd, a right to revenge. But it seems as if we are, have been hardwired to seek revenge. It is the old eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth thing. And sometimes our, our desire for revenge extends beyond the person who wronged us. Sometimes it would extend to their family or their friends or to their people or clan or even to their nation. In biblical times, unlike the cultures around them, the Israelites were unique in that they limited the revenge that one could rightfully take when they had been wronged. 
At that time, there was something called blood, ven blood vengeance in which you could eliminate a whole family. That revenge seemed to have no bounds or limits. You hurt me and I will hurt you ten times over. But Israel said no. Revenge must be limited to the person who had wronged the individual. And Israel even had what was called refuge cities where people could go and seek refuge from vengeance, kind of like a neutral territory. Jesus once said, you have heard it taught that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you, if someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to them also the other cheek. You must not seek revenge, but you must learn how to love your enemies and forgive those who have wronged you. Walk a second mile if you must. In the movie Invictus, a story about Nelson Mandela as he was released from Robben Island Prison in South Africa, we see an example of forgiveness and reconciliation. In one of the movie's pivotal scenes, Mandela says that forgiveness must begin here because forgiveness liberates the soul. It removes fear. And that is why it is such a powerful weapon. Hanging on to the past robs us of the present and deprives us of the future. And this brings us to the final step in forgiveness. We have to revise our feelings. Now, I don't mean that we pretend that what happened didn't happen, nor does it mean forgive and forget, because forgetting is nearly impossible. But forgiving means that we set ourselves free from the past. We set ourselves free from the hold that the other person had upon us. We let go of the past hurt, but we remember the person that hurt us. We are wiser in that they have revealed their character. The relationship will be forever changed but we need to treat them with dignity and respect that befits a child of God. But that does not mean that our relationship can resume the way it was. Because like fine china, once the relationship has been broken, it can never be fully mended to be like it was before. Years ago, I was hurt by someone very, very deeply and I thought that I had moved beyond it. But then I get an email out of the clear blue sky. And it was an email asking for forgiveness for an event that had haunted that individual. Reading that email brought back all kinds of feelings and emotions. It was almost as if I was reliving the moment. And then I remembered the the words that I oftentimes use in the charge, forgive one another as freely as God in Christ has forgiven you. And I wrote down a one word response, forgive, forgiven. And then without thinking, it was almost as if my body had been possessed by someone else, as if my arm had been possessed by another. My index finger hit the send button before I even knew what happened. And it was over. The relationship was not what it was, nor has it really ever been restored through time and distance, but I'm no longer captive. I hope you can find in your heart forgiveness, that you can ask God for the strength and the courage to forgive. This really is God in Christ has forgiven each and every one of us. And in that forgiveness, may you find freedom today and tomorrow. To God be the glory both now and forevermore. Amen. Would you join me in a spirit of prayer? Lord God, in this world so filled with brokenness, we ask that you give us the spirit of forgiveness, the courage and the strength that we need to have, 
Let us put past hurts behind us and let us live every moment in the present and look forward to the future that is held in your hands. Answer all of our various and sundry prayers. Heal the sick. Be with those who mourn. Be with those who find themselves in difficult situations. You know our hearts better than we do. You know our prayers before we can even offer them. Answer our prayers according to your will, but most importantly, Lord, make us perceptive to your will as we go about the living of our lives. In Christ's name we humbly pray. Amen. May the love of God that will never let you go, the peace of Christ that passes all human understanding, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and every day of your life. Amen.